We are on problem number 19. Problem 19. If A, B, C, and F are four non-zero numbers, I don't know why they, where they got F on. I, mean, I would have expected a D. But A, B, C, and F are non-zero numbers, are four non-zero numbers, then all of the following proportions are equivalent except. OK, so this is interesting. This is kind of one where you have to work through all of them. So choice A. A over F is equal to B over C. Let's see. Choice B says F over C is equal to B over A. So the, the, the real simple way of doing this, you could let's take the first let's cross multiply all of them essentially, right? So we can cross multiply. If we multiply both sides by essentially F C, we and that's what cross multiplying is. So we said A times C, A C is equal to B F. Right? A times C is equal to B times F. And you could get there multiplying both sides by F and multiplying both sides by C. If we cross multiply on this side, we have AF. AF is equal to BC. This is an F here. I don't know if I wrote it. AC is equal to BF. Here we have AF is equal to BC. Let's see, choice C is C over A is equal to F over B. What does this tell us? This tells us that CB or BC, BC is equal to AF. So these two are equal. These two are the same thing, right? And D, we have A over C is equal to B over F. If we re this is if we cross multiply, you get AF is equal to BC. These are equal. I think you see a pattern. I suspect that E is going to look very similar to these three, and that this is the different one. But just to do it, I'll show you. Choice E has AF over BC is equal to 1, essentially. So that's AF is equal to BC, which is the same thing as all of these. So A is the one choice that is different. AC is equal to BF is very different than AF is equal to BC, right? We're multiplying different things. These are all the same. Hopefully you see that. And that's, you know, multiplication is communicative and all of that, you know, so it doesn't matter what order you, you, you know, FA and AF are the same thing. But here we're multiplying, it was saying AC is equal to BF. Let's do problem number 20. And you could actually, in that last problem, try it, literally try it with four different non zero numbers, and then you'll, it'll actually, it should work out if you pick good numbers. If you you don't want to deal with the abstract letters, problem number twenty. For all numbers x and y, let the operation square be defined as x square y is equal to x y minus y. If a and b are positive integers, which of the following can be equal to zero? So a b positive integers. So which can be equal to 0? So they're saying choice number 1 is a square b. And that, we learned from here, is the same thing as a times b. Right? It's just pattern matching. Wherever you see the x, you put an a. Wherever you see the b, y, you put a b. So that's a, b, minus y. So oh, Sorry, a, b, minus b. Right? And can I come up with a situation? Where um, where this comes out to be zero, well, sure. If a is one, what happens when a is one? If a is one, then this translates to b minus b, which equals zero, right? And why did I think what happens when a is one? Well, I, this could also be written as a minus one times b, right? If you just kind of factored out the the b's. So that's I said. Well, if a is one, then this term becomes zero. So one. You, this this definitely can be equal to zero. It's not always zero, but it can be, especially if a is one. Okay, let's do choice two. They wrote a plus b square b, and what is that equal to? Well, every time you saw an x, replace it with a plus b. Every time you see a y, replace it with b. So that's equal to that equals. I'll switch colors for variety, just so this you don't get confused with this top part. That's equal to a plus b. a plus b times b times the second term times b. 
minus the second term, minus b. So we can't do what we did the previous time, because now the term a plus b can't equal 1, right? There's no circumstance under a plus b equals 1. How? Because they're both positive. They're both integers, right? So in order for this to equal 1, 1 would have to be 1 and 1 would have to be 0. And neither of them can be negative. So this can't equal 1. So that's not a situation in which we're, this is equal to 0. So let's see if we can solve it. Let's set it equal to 0. And of course, b can't be equal to 0. So let's say, so we see a plus b. We could factor it out. We could say a plus b minus 1 times b is equal to 0, right? We know b can't equal to 0 under any circumstances, right? We know b can't equal 0 because we're saying it's a positive integer. And so this term would have to be equal to 0. And all I did, just I mean, you could multiply this out and you see where I got. I just factored out just the same. I, I, took, I, I divided each of these terms by b and factored it out. And then you're left with a plus b minus 1 times all of that times b. So if b can't equal 0, can a plus b minus 1 equal 0? Well, a plus b minus 1 equals 0. Then a plus b would have to equal 1, which I said it just can't happen. So under no circumstances can choice 2 be equal to 0. And what does choice 3 say? Choice 3 is a square a plus b. And if we map it, that's a times a plus b minus a plus b. And here, we once again, we can factor out the a plus b. So we could write this as a minus 1 times a plus b. And we want to set that equal 0, see if this is possible. Well, for this to be equal 0, either this term would have to be 0, or this term, or both of them, really. Can a plus b equal 0? No, because a is positive, b is positive. They're both integers. Nothing's negative. They have to be greater than 0. So there's no way that this is going to be equal 0. But can a minus 1 equal 0? Well, sure. A, a, a could be 1. If a is 1, then this expression becomes 0. So this one also works. So our choices are the ones that could be 0 are 1 and 3. And those are choices. That is choice E. I'll see you in the next section.